there are different types of animals and plants in our environment. These organisms are made up of cells. One of the main components of plant and animal cells is the cell membrane or plasma membrane. The cell membrane allows the movement of some materials in and out of the cell. For example, our cells need important substances such as oxygen and glucose and remove waste products and chemicals. These materials can enter or leave the cells through the cell membrane. But not all materials can pass through the cell membrane. Small molecules can pass through the cell membrane. Molecules such as carbon dioxide and oxygen are among few simple molecules that can cross the cell membrane. Large molecules like glucose cannot pass through the cell membrane by simple transport mechanism. How the transport of molecules is possible through the cell membrane? Dissolved substances move into and out of the cell across the cell membrane by different transport mechanisms. The transport mechanisms can be either passive transport or unactive transport. Passive transport is a type of transport no energy is needed from the cell to transport substances. No energy is required because substances are moving from their high concentration to their low concentration. Concentration is the number of particles of a substance per unit of volume. The more particles of a substance in a given volume, the higher concentration. There are different types of passive transport. One type of passive transport is diffusion. Diffusion is the movement of a substance from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. Diffusion doesn't require energy. If the substance moves from a different reason, such as pressure or force, that is not diffusion. There are several examples of diffusion in our body. For example, during the process of breathing, oxygen enters to the body and carbon dioxide leaves the body. The oxygen we breathe in enters to the bloodstream by the process of diffusion. When we breathe in, high concentrations of oxygen diffuses from the lungs into the blood. As a result of respiration, Carbon dioxide is produced. This increases the concentration of carbon dioxide in the cells than the surrounding blood. Therefore, carbon dioxide diffuses out through the cell membrane into the blood. The carbon dioxide finally exhaled from the body. Unlike carbon dioxide, large molecules such as glucose cannot pass through the cell membrane by simple diffusion. Glucose can pass through the cell membrane by facilitated diffusion. Facilitated diffusion is a passive transport which carrier protein molecules involved to transport molecules across the cell membrane without using the cell's energy. The energy is obtained from concentration gradient. That means the molecules are transported from region of high concentration to region of low concentration. In order to conduct the experiments, prepare a glass of water and food dye. Add few drops of food dye into the water. As you can see, the dye starts to diffuse from its high concentration to its low concentration.
in some cases we smell good or bad odor. This is because some substances that smell release their particles into the air in the form of gas. For example, particles from the liquid in the bottle are diffusing from the bottle into the air. As a result of diffusion, some of the particles reach the nose of this student and the student smells and reacts. The rate of diffusion can be affected by different factors. The rate of diffusion is the change in the number of diffusing molecules inside the cell over time. One of the factors that affect the rate of diffusion is temperature. Molecules move or diffuse rapidly in high temperature than in low temperature. This is because higher temperature increases the energy of the molecules. As the energy increases, the movement of molecules increases. For example, the movement of water vapor molecules in this material increases as the temperature increases, and their movement decreases as the temperature decreases. This indicates that the molecules move rapidly in high temperature than in low temperature. As a result, the rate of diffusion increases. Lower temperatures decrease the energy of the molecules thus decreasing the rate of diffusion. Let's look at the following experiments on how temperature affects the rate of diffusion. To conduct the experiments, prepare two beakers Prepare blue and red color food dyes. Label the bakers as A and B. Add cold water in baker A and hot water in baker B. Add blue color food dye in baker A and the red color food dye in baker B at the same time. As you can see, the red food dye which is in hot water is diffusing faster than the blue food dye which is in cold water. This indicates the rate of diffusion increases in high temperature. Another type of passive transport is osmosis. Osmosis is the diffusion of solvent from its high concentration to its low concentration through a semi-permeable membrane. A universal solvent, water, moves from an area of its high concentration to an area of its low concentration. Water moves in or out of a cell until its concentration is the same in both sides of the plasma membrane. Let's look at the following example of osmosis. Initially, the concentration of the water molecules in area A is higher than area B. As a result of osmosis, the water molecules start to move from area A to area B across a semi-permeable membrane. Osmosis has several advantages in living organisms. For example, water enters from the soil to the roots of the plant by osmosis. Osmosis is also important in opening and closing of stomata in plants. The opening and closing of stomata enables plants to release oxygen into the environment and take carbon dioxide from the atmosphere by the plants. Another type of transport is an active transport. Active transport, also known as uphill transport, is the movement of molecules from a region of low concentration to a region of high concentration. That means the molecules move against gradients. Assume you are pushing a box uphill. Since you are working against gravity, extra energy is needed. Active transport works the same way. An active transport requires energy. This energy is obtained from respiration. Adenosine triphosphate, ATP, is the most common type of energy used in active transport. 
Active transport uses proteins called pumps to transport substances against their concentration gradient. As you can see, potassium ion is low outside the cell and sodium ion is low inside the cell. These ions start to move from their low concentration to high concentration. This requires energy in the form of ATP. Needs essential nutrients and minerals to survive. For example, the transport of minerals from the soil through the roots hairs takes place by unactive transport. Attempt the following questions. What is the difference between passive and active transport? Define the following terms. Diffusion, osmosis. What is the difference between simple diffusion and facilitated diffusion?
Passive transport is a type of transport. No energy is needed from the cell to transport substances. No energy is required because the substances are moving from high concentration to low concentration. An active transport is a type of transport where substances move from an area of low concentration to an area of high concentration. Active transport requires energy. Diffusion is the movement of substance from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. Osmosis is the diffusion of solvent across a membrane. In general, there are two types of transport, namely passive and active transport. Passive transport doesn't require energy. Materials move from region of high concentration to a region of low concentration. An active transport requires energy. Organisms require transport systems to carry out different processes in the body. Different substances in and out of the cell are transported by different types of transport mechanisms. Therefore, transport is important for the survival of an organism.